you dedicate your 1985 Touring Award lecture to the memory of your father. Mm -hmm. What's your fondest memory of your dad? Seeing him standing in front of a class at the blackboard, drawing perfect circles by hand and showing uh, his, his uh, ability to attract the interest of the, the motley collection of eighth grade students that he was teaching. When, when did you get a chance to see him draw the perfect circles? I, on rare occasions, he, I, I would get a chance to sneak into his classroom and observe, uh, observe it. And, and I think he was at his best in the classroom. I think he really came to life and uh, had fun um, not only teaching, but, uh, but um, you know, engaging in chit-chat with the students and you know, uh, ingratiating himself with the students. And uh, what I inherited from that is um, a great desire to be a teacher. I retired recently, and a lot of my former students came, students who's, with whom I had done research or who had read my papers or who had been in my classes. And when they talked about, about me, um, they talked not about my 1979 paper or my 1992 paper, but about what they what came away in my classes, and not just the details, but just the approach and the the um, manner of teaching. And so I sort of take pride in the at least in my early years as a faculty member at Berkeley, I was exemplary in preparing my lectures and. I always came in prepared to the teeth and able, therefore, to deviate according to what happened in the class and to really, um, really provide a model for the students. So, is there advice you could give out for others on how to be a good teacher? So, preparation is one thing you've mentioned, being exceptionally well prepared, but there are other things, pieces of advice that you can impart? Well, the top three would be preparation, preparation, and preparation. <laughs> <laughs> Why is preparation so important, I guess? Uh, is uh, It's because it gives you the ease to deal with any situation that comes up in the, in the classroom. And, uh, you know, if you're if you discover that you're not getting through one way, you can do it another way. If the students have questions, you can handle the questions. So ultimately, you're also feeling the, the, the crowd, the students of what they're struggling with, what they're picking up, just looking at them through the questions, but even just through their eyes. Yeah, And because of the right. preparation, you, you, can, uh, you can dance. You can dance, you can, you can say it another way or give another angle. Are there, in particular, ideas and algorithms of computer science that you find were big aha moments for students, where they, for some reason, once they got it, it clicked for them and they fell in love with computer science? Or is it individual? Is it different for everybody? It's different for everybody. You have to work differently with students. Some, some, some of them just don't re don't need much influence you, you know, they, they, they're just running with what they're doing and they just need an ear now and then. Others need a little prodding. Others need to be persuaded to collaborate among themselves rather than working alone. Um, they have their personal ups and downs. So, you know, you have to ha have to deal with each student as a human being and uh, bring out the best. Humans are complicated. Yeah. Perhaps a silly question. If you could relive a moment in your life outside of family because it made you truly happy, or perhaps because it changed the direction of your life in a profound way, what moment would you pick? I was kind of a lazy student <laughs> as an undergraduate. And um, even in my first year in graduate school, and I think it was when I started doing research 
I had a couple of summer jobs where I was able to contribute, and um, I had an idea. And then there was one particular course on mathematical methods and operations research where I just gobbled up the material and I scored 20 points higher than anybody else in the class and came to the attention of the faculty. And it made me realize that I had some ability, uh, some ability that it was going somewhere. <laughs> uh, you realize you're pretty good at this thing. I don't think there's a better way to end it, Richard. It was a huge honor. Thank you for decades of incredible work. Well, thank you for talking to Thank you. It's been a great pleasure. And uh, you're a superb interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop it.